Hello there, my name is Daniel Jones, and this is Orlando in the Yard. Recently, I've become very interested in hummingbirds and butterflies and finding ways to attract them to my yard. Over the course of this short video, I hope to show you some of the things that I've done to be successful in this endeavor. One of the first things that you want to consider when you are creating your garden is making sure that you are doing so in areas that receive ample light. Both butterflies and hummingbirds are very fond of the sun, and so you should place your plants as full sun plants that attract them into areas that get a lot of sunlight. Another important thing to consider is the spacing. You want to have as many of your flowers as close together as possible so that the hummingbirds and butterflies need not fly so far to get from one to the other and cross-pollinate. But at the same time, you want to have some leading bushes that will attract them to the yard. If you look in the background, you will see the gora that we were just looking at a moment ago over by the well. The gora will help to lead and draw butterflies and hummingbirds from our neighbor's yard down to the pentas and the lantana that we have placed along the wall. Pentas and lantanas are excellent for butterflies and hummingbirds also and it will lead them down the wall to our next stop. Here at the very end of our wall, nearest our driveway, we have placed three firebush and a small lantana. If you look to the far end of the wall, you can see the pentas and the lantanas that we had placed down there. Firebush are excellent for hummingbirds. My wife actually did not believe that until I would taken her to the nursery with me one time and there happened to be two hummingbirds just feasting on the long line of fire bushes that were there. A short 10 paces from the end of our wall where we had placed the fire bushes, we have the hub of our garden. As you can see, there are two gora sitting next to an Indian hawthorn, a rose bush, a crepe myrtle tree, which we will look at a little closer in just a moment, as well as a budlia. Budlia is more commonly called the butterfly bush. What's fascinating about them is that as they lose their blooms at the end, new ones are always recreating. If we come in real close here, you can see that there is a new bloom just getting ready to start. And just above that is the centerpiece of our garden called a shrimp plant. Named such because the flowers actually look like shrimp on skewers. What's interesting about the shrimp plant is it keeps its flower sheathed. A hummingbird's nose is the only thing that can get in there to draw out the nectar. Just above, we have placed a hummingbird feeder with nectar. They're drawn to bright colors, not just red. And this draws the hummingbirds in. And by drawing the hummingbirds in, once we've given them enough rich sources of food, they will very likely stay there. Lastly, just out of the sun, almost in a shady area, we have placed some milkweed. Milkweed is again another butterfly and hummingbird attracting bush. The reason that we wanted to move it just out of the sun is so that the birds and the butterflies can be near shade for rest. Because while they like the sun when they are feeding, they need the shade for rest. So we have placed it underneath our bougainville and the eaves of our house so that hummingbirds can create a nest. And that is just a few of the small things that I have done around the yard to attract hummingbirds and butterflies, and attract them I have. Within the last week, we've had several butterflies here, and I've seen two hummingbirds. For more information about hummingbirds or butterflies, continue to visit our page here on Facebook, or you can go to joneslawn.com backslash specials and we can help you install your own butterfly and hummingbird garden. Thank you, and have a good day.